By 1992, the Game Boy had come a long way. Not only were its games getting bigger, its competition from Atari and Sega just couldn't keep up. Meanwhile, one of its most popular launch games was about to get a sequel, Super Mario Land 2, The Six Golden Coins. Time for more story time. While Mario was out busting his butt to save Daisy and Sarazalan, the island of Mario Land was taken over by professional penguin impersonator Wario. Wario is Mario's rival, and has finally succeeded in stealing our hero's castle. Wario steals out the front door, and Mario has to find six special coins scattered across the island in order to unlock it. Since when has Mario had a castle? It's never been discussed in the latter games. The graphics have been given an immense overhaul. The sprites are much bigger than an SML1, adding to the player's ability to see what's going on. Super Ball Mario is gone, and Fire Mario returns. But due to a lack of color, they stick a feather in his hat and call it Macaroni. On the subject of power-ups, there's also Bunny Mario. This ability allows you to fly for short distances, and it's easily my favorite in the game. There's no scoreboard, but there is a monster meter. Knock out 100 enemies, and win a star meter. Take out 5 enemies while invincible, and you get an extra life. As you can see, 100 points won't net you a 1-up. Instead, coins are used at the casino, where you can win 1-ups and other stuff. Yeah, there's a casino in this game. Hey kids, place your bets! Your quest to open up the castle will lead you through the world's largest tree, under the sea, through a giant Mario robot, and into space. Yeah, I thought this was Mario's first trip to the stars? Think again. Of these six sections on the island, my favorite is the Pumpkin Zone. You got little Jason Voorhees masks, you got Goomba ghosts, and even a Dracula stand. There's even monsters from Japanese mythology thrown in, like Lantern Ghosts, Living Umbrellas, and Shudo Cyclops? Oh, okay. Moving on. In regard to Bumpkin Zone 3, does this sound familiar? No? Then try this opera side. The six coins are guarded by some pretty odd bosses, even by Mario standards. For instance, the three little pigs are the bosses of Mario Zone. You fight the Tonga one more time at the end of Space Zone, but this indicates that the Sarazalan Crisis was all staged by Wario. Speaking of Wario, when all the coins are in place, you can play through the castle. And it's easily the toughest stage in the game, with all its swing balls, its giant fists, its spike traps, its lava, and its Wario globes. Of course, you could switch over to the easy mode to beat it, but where's the fun in that? Besides, every time you go into a level, you'll be penalized with this screen to remind you that you can handle this game on default. For the sake of your honor, just play on normal. In the fight with Wario, he cycles through the game's power-ups. The mushroom, the carrot, and the fire flower, in that order. He shrinks from the damage, cries, and then... throws a shoe? Then Mario jumps from the castle after him, and that somehow turns it back to normal. Wario did get the last laugh, though. Because of this game, he became a popular character and even started the sequel. Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Here, Wario battles pirates as he searches for a giant Princess Peach statue. A golden treasure he wants to sell in exchange for a better castle than Mario's. 
this marked yet another branching in the franchise. For Wario would go on to star in several sequels before starring his own company that makes ludicrously short minigames. As for Mario Land, it made like Stanley the Bugman and faded away, never to be talked about again. <laughs>